figure out how to Don't you play that. Stay. Go beans. It's like a mystery leaf in here. What? <gasps> mystery leaf with a mystery root. Cute. What is up, guys? My name is Jess. I'm the creator of Pink Rex, and I am here to do a Monstera repot with you. So let's do it. And you know, if you wanted to like and subscribe, it really helps me out. This is the first time in probably eight or nine months that she's going to be repotted. She has grown a ton. She has a bunch of aerial roots happening. I'm going to point us down just a bit. Hello. And this is my potting mat. I got it on Amazon for like nine dollars, and it's honestly the best nine dollars I have ever spent. It has saved my relatively light colored carpet from so much trauma. My assistants today are an old cotton candy container and an old Wendy's cup. I do have a moss pulp in here. I do make these. They're available on my Etsy. Maybe if it just... Yep, it's... That's not gonna work. Okay. Getting everywhere. The sand actually did really good things for helping keep the fungus gnat population down, so... If you are struggling with fungus gnats and you've tried like diatomaceous earth and granular insecticide, I would recommend trying sand like a half an inch on the top of your plants. It helps a lot. I'm gonna look at this later and realize I look like an absolute dork. A sad garden spade. I got it at the dollar store, full disclosure. I love the dollar store even though I shouldn't. We have a toxic relationship. So if it was a plastic pot, you could kind of squish it as you go, but if your plant has been in a pot for a long time, its roots are probably attached to the base, especially on a terracotta pot, so this is an important part of the process if you want to loosen it up before tipping it down. You want to try to not have your aerial roots facing down, but you're just going to tip it over. I don't know, poke into the drainage hole and like push forward. Sometimes that helps release it from the bottom, especially if the roots are stuck. I'm just going to go in and loosen the root ball a little bit, split them up, and then rearrange them. I am going to lose some root, but that is okay. They root really easily. Give them a little jingle. Helps kind of work them apart sometimes. Look at those roots. Hot dang. Now we have three separate stems. So for most reef pots, you don't want to go with a pot that has more than a two inch increase on any side if possible. Usually you could use like a ruler, but all I have is a I don't know, this is for clothes, for sewing. <laughs> this is a 10 inch pot. This one is a 12 inch pot on the inner diameter. My only issue with this pot is the really dinky, wimpy drainage holes. Not to worry, I have a drill. Needs to charge because my drill battery is perpetually dead. Not very useful like this. I guess in the meantime, let's mix up our soil. What I do is one part perlite to one part soil, which I'm probably going to reuse their soil for and add a little bit more. And then add like 25% charcoal. It works pretty good for all of my aeroids. I don't have to get too complicated. But I don't have a mask, so I'm gonna go do this outside because you don't want to breathe in perlite. Horticultural charcoal, which is also very dusty, which I didn't think of before I dumped it in here and now it's just charcoal dusty everywhere. They're going back in their original soil, so it's not a huge deal but you want to try to get the soil off the roots if you can, because otherwise it's it's just another stress for them. Whoops. I almost dumped our good friend Wendy all over the ground. Our good friend, another reused cotton candy container. <laughs> and add the original soil back in there. Great thing about the potting mat. Life's a breeze. Except for in here, because it's hot. I'm trying really hard not to make a stupid face while I do this, but notorious for making stupid faces when I'm focused on something. Most of the products I use are by a company called Black Gold. It just feels good to buy a brand that isn't miracle Grow, <laughs> But miracle Grow is pretty good too. I use them for a long time. Not to rip on miracle Grow. Like the plant community has some weird snobby issues with miracle Grow. Maybe they're justified issues with miracle Grow. I just, uh, I never really looked into it. When I worked as a houseplant specialist, at a greenhouse not that long ago. The Black Gold was the um, the brand that they got in. And I just, I don't know, I kind of got attached to it. Not gonna lie. My glasses keep sliding down my nose because I'm sweating at this point. Oh, the truth. Nice. These are whole saw bits. Hmm, maybe this won't work on plastic. Dad, where are you? <laughs> I need tool help. The only unusual thing I do is I always make sure to cover the drainage holes. This is just 
mesh from like around oranges or apples that you get at the grocery store. So you try to keep the soil from falling out as best it can. It was a hot trend for a very long time, still probably is. To put a layer of rocks on the bottom of your pot, I would not recommend doing that as it changes the saturation line in the soil because water doesn't transfer well from one media to another. If you've been doing that your whole life, keep doing it. Not trying to argue with you here. I'm not trying to pick a fight with anybody. That was supposed to be like a, a small dump of soil, but I guess we're just going all in at this point. I should probably put my gloves back on. Oh, there's a train going by. Lovely. Thank you for coming exactly when I'm filming my YouTube video. Definitely moss pole in exactly the middle, trying not to impale anyone on our way down. I just used regular twine to tie up pretty much all my plants. This twine and this little snipper are from the dollar store. Shh, don't tell nobody. I'm gonna tie like a regular little square knot. Not too tight. You don't wanna, you know, strangle them. Now that that's a thing, I'm just going to kind of bonk it around to get some of the air out of the soil, because otherwise it'll compact really hard when I water it or it'll just be really hydrophobic. The water will kind of find an easy path through the soil, but not actually be absorbed. Yeah, that's the stinky guy. My dude man, my broski. I'm probably gonna edit that out, I don't know. Aside from covering the top layer with sand, I would say she's ready to go. Nice, super light, airy soil we came out with, so that was what we were going for. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Pink Rex Plants. Thanks for watching. Bye!